If Brahi is an attractive god as he's reciting poetry, then one might say that he is scalding hot. As Eyr enters Asgard, he is met by one of the gods. He's not quite what one imagines when they think of a Norse god. He's happy, horn of mead in hand, ready to share his drink, food, and stories. He has prepared a feast, and he is excited to host his new guest. He invites Eyr to sit next to him, to tell him of what he saw on his travels on the way to Asgard. As they share drinks, Bregi entertains Eyr, with stories of the gods. This is the setup for stories Skaldskaparmal within the Prosetta, which is a handbook on Norse poetry that tells stories and discusses how one is to refer to the gods, people, and various other things. And Brahi teaches Eyr how to refer to ships, men, women, armor, weapons, and the gods themselves through the use of poetic language. He tells stories such as how his wife was abducted by the Jotun Thiazi, and of how Skathi, the Jotun daughter of Thiazi, became an Aesir. He tells also of how Odin obtained the meat of poetry, and of how Mjolnir came to be. It is recounted in Skaldic poetry, describing the courage of various leaders such as Eric Bloodaxe, that Bragi is among those who welcome arrivals to Valhalla or Valhol. This description would fit with the Bragi that we see welcoming Eyr into Asgard to share stories. But there are questions, as this name seems to be shared by a god of poetry and a skaldic poet named Bragi Bodason, reputed to have been the skaldic poet in the court of several kings, including that of Ragnar Lothbrok, the semi-legendary king who surged in popularity due to the Vikings TV show. The result of this is that there is discussion as to whether or not this early skaldic poet, with many attestations, is actually the same as the deity that we find in Asgard, telling stories to Eyr and is represented in the Lokasena as the husband of Ithun. Ascension from human to deity is not exactly uncommon throughout history. However, this particular case does seem to be unreasonably quick. There are questions, however, as to the age of Bradi's worship, as there are little bits in language pointed out by Snorri that suggest that he's older than some may guess. But these might fall prey to the chicken and egg conversation. We simply don't know which may have influenced the other. So it's possible that the poet was named after the god. It's also possible that the poet later became deified. And it's also possible that the poet was said to be the god incarnate in some way. There's nothing really available to settle this matter, but he is referenced often in language, such as his name being a reference to leadership. The cup of Bragi, for example, means the leader's cup. This, however, hints at another question pertaining to Bragi's identity. So, Snorri describes Bragi as being renowned for his wisdom, but particularly uh, of poetry. Odin, too, is heavily associated with poetry as the thief of the meat of poetry. Now combine that with his famed pursuit of wisdom, and it's entirely possible that we're discussing the same deity here, that Bragi may have at one point been a name of Odin that was separated into his own tradition. It's also possible that the name could have been associated with Odin because of some ancient deity with these associations. Again, we are met with unanswerable questions regarding the nature of how this deity was understood at the height of his worship. But it is clear that by the time the Eddas are recorded, Bragi is recognized as a deity among the Aesir. He is cast essentially as the skald of heaven's court and is described as having runes carved onto his tongue. He's also very teacherly. He's cast as the narrator in much of Snorri's handbook for understanding poetry, which is an obviously reasonable choice on the part of Snorri to have the god of poetry be the guide around the nature of poetic storytelling. So, we should recognize just how important poetry seemed to be among Icelandic traditions specifically. And one way to point this out is through simply recognizing the behavior around poetry in the Icelandic sagas, two of which come to mind really quickly, and that is the saga of Grettir the Strong and Egil saga. Grettir the Strong is this massive human being who, over the course of the saga, is outlawed and has to survive on his own. But in addition to this hulking frame, he has a cunning wit and a sharp tongue, such that he is known not only as a warrior, 
but as a poet, and often as a poet before warrior. Eyjol, similarly, is known as a poet in addition to his renown as a warrior. And in the case of Eyjol, his poetry often wins him gifts or gets him out of, we'll call them complicated diplomatic situations, because he composes and recites poetry, praising someone that's ready to kill him. So, in one memorable case, Eyjol composes a poem in honor of his rival, Eric Bloodaxe, a king convinced that he should execute Eyjol for his past dealings. But this poem softens the interactions, and he's allowed to leave peacefully. My dude is composing and reciting poetry in order to keep his head. It's also worth noting that magical acts are often associated with poetry in the sagas. Rune sticks in the form of poetry have magical effects, and poets seem to be familiar with magical attacks. Eyjol, for example, recognizes a poisoned cup and defeats it with rune magic, and Grettir is able to discern a tree cursed with rune magic that is intended to do him harm. Eyjol also corrects rune magic gone awry when he observes that healing runes were done by somebody unfamiliar with them, causing like the opposite effect that it was intended, and he removes this magical item and replaces it with one of his own making in order to promote healing. Such magical acts associated with poetry would no doubt be associated with Bragi and Odin. Uh, and it does seem that through this, the identities of warrior and poet are not at all mutually exclusive. In fact, it seems reasonable that people were often both, as were Grettir and Eyjol. This would mean that Loki's accusation toward Bragi in the Lokasena would have cut particularly deep, especially in front of his wife, Idun as Loki goads the god of poetry into anger. Idun, however, calms him and wisely refuses to engage with Loki herself. But Loki calls Bragi a coward, a bench ornament, and goads him, saying that a bold man would have attacked him then and there. But we don't know what story this would be referencing. It seems that this likely references an event within a legend that has been lost to time. But the context suggests that Bragi would have had legends where he is represented as a warrior, likely much in that same tradition of warrior poets, such as Eyjol and Grettir. I want to bring up a quick note on the Lokasena. Loki is by and large a troll in this story, but he's the best kind of troll in that it seems that he's trolling with the truth. He gets the gods riled up by pointing out aspects of the stories, but with his own spin, sometimes straightforwardly, sometimes with an obvious bent to the story. In many cases, we have references to verify his insults, but in some cases we don't, denoting that there are legends missing from those that we possess. Loki reveals another little bit of knowledge about Bragi, which is that it is he who killed Itun's brother, and yet she remains married to him. Now, again, the origins of this story is unknown, but it may have to do with some unknown legend of the foundations of Bragi's union with Idun. We likely will never know the nuances of this relationship, other than how we see it represented in the Lokasena, in which we see Idun as this calming force, and Bragi as bombastic and impulsive, engaging with Loki and taking his bait. Now, it does seem that their marriage is a balanced one, from the limited view that we see of it, and it's interesting how one tiny interaction can tell us so much, in which Idun is protective of her proud husband who is so full of passion, and that it seems that he will take Loki's bait as it's offered. Idun sees ahead, whereas Bragi is focused on the moment. And we learn tiny little bits about their character and how they were seen from just a few lines of poetry. With Odin and Bragi both seen as wisdom gods associated with poetry, we should poke around at where they might delineate distinction. Odin's association with poetry seems more focused on raw passion, whereas Bragi is concerned with diction and structure. He teaches Eyr proper kennings, in addition to other references and nuances of poetry within Snorri's Prosetta, which would lend to him being associated broadly with literature. Bragi would also be a deity associated with the duties of a host. Now, in his teaching of Eyr, he is kind, he is warm, he cares for his guest, both for his material and his social needs. So, in devotion to Bragi, one would be sure that their guests are well provided for, that their needs are met, and that they would feel included in your hall. In modern practice with Bragi, there are some things to think about. His association with poetry creates a special case. He seems to fill a space among the gods as the court's scald. 
he would be one to appeal to in creative endeavors, similarly to how I approach Saga. But while Bragi might be associated with that creative endeavor, it also might make sense to include him in the editing process, given his concern with structure, as you look over your drafts and search for the right words in your songs, poetry, papers, or stories. I feel that Bragi would be especially associated with spoken poetry, such as songs or slam poetry. The runes on his tongue imply an association with oral traditions, and skaldic poetry was often sung. Tacitus references in Germania that the Germanic tribes would recall their past in songs, performing for each other as they shared their history. This might even suggest that Bragi is the keeper of the past among the gods. And there is a sacredness to spoken poetry that is hard to deny, and Bragi might be the one to call upon for the courage and passion required to perform it. Brahi is a deity from which we have a few scraps of information, but that information can do a lot of work. Again, we have a deity that is surrounded by more questions than answers, far more possibilities about how he may have fit into the pantheon than clear and concise information about his role. I've given you some of my thoughts based on practice and consideration, but let me know what you think. Sometimes we discover a few things together in the comment section, and that is always cool. But with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. The like button and the subscribe button are engaging in a flighting battle through poetry. And I don't know which one is going to win. But a great solution to the matter would be to click them both and then ring the bell for the winner. And remember to find a way or make one. <laughs>